happy Tuesday. Yes, if you happen to be in the United States, then you are probably getting back to work, I would think, following the Memorial Day weekend. So all I've got to say is, if you're feeling down about being back at work and kind of a little hungover from a, from a great holiday weekend, just be thankful you're not Roseanne Barr today. That's all I got to say. Anyway, <laughs> the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, Jeff McAleer back once again. I'm your host here at The Daily Dope, as well as being your grand poobah of thegaminggang.com. So as I opened up the show, uh, yeah, Roseanne Barr, lots of hot water today, and um, she deserves whatever she's getting. In fact, uh, ABC just canceled her show. It will not be back for another season. But I'm not going to repeat what uh, Roseanne Barr tweeted, but regardless of what side of the aisle you may be politically, there is absolutely no way that that is uh, appropriate. I mean, what she tweeted was just abhorrent. It was repulsive. It really was. So um, glad to see ABC said, hey, you know what? That doesn't reflect our values. So uh, your show's canceled. Anyway. Because I guess uh, the folks uh, operating ABC aren't the, the kind of people on a Friday night who have to sit there and decide, well, what am I going to wear tonight? Is it going to be my Nazi regalia or should I just bust out my clan robes? Don't know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, very bizarre. Very bizarre. Anyway, hopefully you had uh, a great holiday weekend if you're here in the U.S. If you're not then here's hoping you had a great weekend and your week is off to a rocking start. Got uh, quite a few things cooking today. I've got some news. I'm going to take a sneak peek at Heroes vs. Warlords, which is from UGG out of Germany. Uh, it is going to be coming to Kickstarter in September. Originally, it was supposed to launch this month. It was supposed to be coming out on Kickstarter this month. But I'm going to take a peek. This is a prototype. This is far from being the, the finished uh, product, but I have not actually dug in and taken a look. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I've got uh, a few other things cooking as well. But before I get into the news, I should reveal there is no winner for Modern Kynan's Tome of Foes from Wizards of the Coast. I had the limited edition. It's up on the shelf right behind me. Had limited edition. I was going to give it away if uh, to a YouTube subscriber if I reached 110 subscribers by end of yesterday. I did not, so I'm not giving it away. Just basically how it goes. You know, uh, there were rules, didn't happen, so I'm going to keep it. I mean, you know, maybe I'll even put it out there on eBay or something like that to help, uh, help fund the, uh, the gaming gang and thus... The Daily Dope. I don't know. Then again, I might change my mind tomorrow and decide I'm going to do a contest on Twitter. I I don't know. But honestly, I am tempted to just keep it. Because, um, I don't know, I try to run these contests and stuff. And, yeah, it, it, I, I've given away free games, stuff like that. And it's very lackluster uh, response to it. So it's like, well, whatever. I don't have to give stuff out. It's not as if Wizards of the Coast sent that along and said, hey, give this away. Absolutely not. Anyway, whatever. It's okay. I'm in a good mood. Don't worry. I'm not crabby. Although, uh, I did not go camping, but I'll talk about that in just a bit. So let's talk about the news. Because, speaking of Wizards of the Coast, the Magic the Gathering Heroes of Dominaria board game, which is coming this August from Wizards of the Coast has actually seen a price drop prior to its release, as well as uh, some uh, preview images of the miniatures included in the game. And I've got the dope. 
in Magic the Gathering, Heroes of Domini, uh, I should say, Dominaria board game, players take on the role of a powerful hero as they travel the lands of Dominaria. That's just kind of an odd, uh, doesn't roll off the tongue, really. As a player explores the ancient lands, they need to build sites, rediscover lost artifacts, and confront the sinister Cabal in order to gain the resources needed to save the multiverse before rival heroes do. In the game, you explore Magic's most iconic plane and experience the trials and tribulations of being a heroic force on Dominaria. Visit storied locations such as Landwar, Herb, Herborg, and Keld. Yes, storied. I don't know. Draw mana from the world to power abilities and recruit heroes to aid in quests. Discover powerful artifacts and create ley lines to draw even more mana from distant lands. Build sites to increase your bond with a location. The land of Dominaria is filled with adventure and excitement. The game is for two to four players, and you will be able to play as famed planeswalkers Jaharia, Jahara, I believe, Karn, Teferi, and Chandra. The standard edition of the game is going to carry an MSRP of $49.95. It arrives this August, while the premium edition, which ships in September, will be able to be had for $59.95. I've got to say that uh, these pre-painted minis look pretty cool. They do look pretty cool for this uh, Wizards uh, of the Coast Magic the Gathering board game. That said, I don't know. I don't, I don't. The Magic the Gathering games, which are not part of the collectible card game universe, don't seem to do all that well. I'm not saying that they're bad. Uh, I actually dug the uh, the Planeswalkers game that came out. I thought that was that was a pretty cool game, but they just they just don't sell well. I don't know. Maybe it's just people just think Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering cards, not board games. Anyway, but I will be interested to see this in August. I'm assuming it will be on sale at Gen Con. If not then it will certainly be demoed at Gen Con. All right, I do have to point out, pretty heavy on the RPG news today. Didn't find a lot cooking as far as uh, a lot of war, or like board games, war games, jumping out at me. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fluff on Kickstarter that's like, eh, eh. Anyway, but I do want to point out there's another adventure available now for Star Trek Adventures from Modifius Entertainment. And I've got the dope. Stardate 48326.3. Our mission is to proceed to the Federation Protectorate world of Tolan 4 to help mediate a, dis a disagreement between two rival factions. The government of Tolan IV wishes to remain under the Federation's protection with the hopes of joining as a member world later. Their opposition wishes for Tolan IV to withdraw itself from Federation protection to take its place in the galactic community on its own terms. Tolan IV is located near the Romulan neutral zone and thus is a strategic location for Starfleet to monitor Romulan activity and is also rich in dilithium Tritanium and Trillium D. So the <laughs> Trillium D. I don't know, just some reason like Sunny D. So the mining rights of the planet's surface are of great interest to the Tolan people and to their more powerful neighbors. This will require all my crew's skills of tact, diplomacy, and negotiation if we're going to come to a peaceful resolution which satisfies both factions as well as the interests of Starfleet. This standalone 24-page PDF adventure called Ends and Means by Troy Mepians, guessing on that last name, for Star Trek Adventures, pitches your Starfleet crew into the middle of a tense negotiation between the rival factions of Tolan IV. Can you bring an end to the dispute before it spills over into civil war? And how will you react when events take a turn for the worse? sending your crew tumbling into a world of intrigue, action, 
and adventure. Star Trek Adventures Ends and Means is available as of today, and you can score it from our friends over at Drive Through RPG for four dollars and ninety nine cents. I like the premise that I I'm seeing for this ends and means. Simply because uh, that is very Trekish. That is, you know, Starfleet going to a world trying to negotiate uh, between two rival factions. Planet wants, you know, one faction wants to join the Federation, the other does not. Sounds pretty interesting. Sounds pretty cool. And of course, I've said it time and time again. I think Modifius Entertainment has done a fantastic job with Star Trek Adventures. All right, so if you're a fan of Pathfinder, uh, you should be happy that now that uh, PaizoCon is over, now the releases for Pathfinder for the month can start to arrive. And there are two. The fourth part of the current Pathfinder adventure, Path War for the Crown, and the newest player companion, Blood of the Ancients, arrive this week. And here's the dope on both. As the War for the Crown escalates, General Pitharius, Princess Utop Eutropia's... Eutropia? Okay. Princess Eutropia's rival for the throne plots to plunge the nation into war. All right, so the general's not, uh, not a very good guy. Threatening to kill thousands of people to rally others to him. From the fortress city of Zamar, he commands the overwhelming army of Teldor as well as one of the most ruthless spy masters the world has ever known. Even with the resources of the legendary Lion Blades to aid them, can the PCs hope to outmaneuver a conspiracy and prevent the War for the Crown from becoming a war between nations? Or will Taldor again descend into a thousand years of violence? This volume of Pathfinder Adventure Path... That's weird. This volume of THE... Pathfinder Adventure Path. Hey, I didn't write this. I'm just reading it. Continues the War for the Crown Adventure Path and includes City in the Lion's Eye, a Pathfinder RPG adventure for 10th level characters by Miko Kallio. Hopefully I got that pronounced correctly. A Gazetteer of the City of Zamar, the fortified heart of Taldor's military, also by Miko Kallio. A profile of the Lion Blades, Masters of Disguise, and the Most Fierce Spies of the Inner Sea by Liz Smith. Eight of the deadliest Rakshashas found within the Inner Sea region for use as an adventure supplement or in any campaign by Eleanor Farron. A collection of strange beasts that prowl southern Taldor from the invulnerable Chittakin. It's kind of funny. Something with a name like Chittakin doesn't sound like it would be invulnerable. To the emoliating <laughs> Pyrogeist by Mike Headley, Miko Calio, Joe Kondrak, and Clairvo Oikirinen? I'm guessing. Sorry if I got it wrong. I'm sure it's wrong. I'm sure I pronounced these names wrong. I do try. Sorry if they're wrong. Anyway, the physical book is going to be in stores this week. I think it arrives tomorrow. Or because of the holiday, it might be Thursday. Yeah, maybe Thursday. All depends. Sometimes, uh, like comics, like comic stores um, would have comics run a day late. But I, that was back in the day. I think they're always out on time now. I, they're, I think they're always out on Wednesdays now. Anyway, so the physical book for the fourth part of War for the Crown will be out this week. It carries an MSRP of $24.99, and the PDF is going to be available, I believe it's tomorrow, for $17.99. Now, I mentioned there are two releases. The other release is Blood of the Ancients. The legacy lives on in Blood of the Ancients. Civilizations have risen and fallen across Galarian for thousands of years, leaving legends and ruins in their wake. Though nations may vanish, they are never truly gone, so long as their traditions and descendants still survive. Breathe life into these lost cultures with character options that trace their origins back to ancient times, or pay homage to a distant ancestry with one of the archetypes presented in Pathfinder Player Companion, 
Blood of the Ancients. Inside this book, you will find the Vestige Bloodline, which allows both Blood Ragers and Sorcerers the power to not only glimpse into the past, but also summon long-dead ancestors and forgotten cities and battlefields into the present day. New archetypes from the ancient Aslanti, Eon Kineticists, and the Spawn Slayers of Nin Shabur, to the Golem Forged Jiskin Artificers, and the Heaven Mandated Jinny Yui <laughs> Investigators of Lungwa. New spells recovered from ancient cultures, including mystic runes from Shori, life preserving magic from the M Mirani Arcane Wardens, and spells believed to have been used by the founder of Jistka himself. This Pathfinder player companion is intended for use with the Pathfinder role playing game and the Pathfinder campaign setting but it can easily be incorporated into any fantasy world. Blood of the Ancients will be available in print for $14.99, and the PDF will carry an MSRP of $10.49. Nice to see the new releases uh, for Pathfinder for the month making their way out. Uh, usually they're out way earlier than this, but because there was uh, PaizoCon that just took place, uh, I want to say it was over this past weekend. Uh, of course, obviously, there was going to be a little delay in getting stuff out because the company was getting ready for their big convention. I believe uh, Board, Game, Board Game Geeks Spring Con was just this weekend as well. So anyway, but... Um, you know, when I talk about, like, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons and how I like this system and I, I do like what Wizards of the Coast has done, I never mean that I don't like Paizo. I think Paizo's done really great stuff with Pathfinder. Really, my, um, my knock, and it's not really a knock because you see it with a lot of role-playing game companies, uh, my only kind of little dig is there's just so much that comes out for Pathfinder and there are, I have looked at some of the um, the completed, like, adventure paths, and I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. I'd, I'd maybe, you know, kit bash this to run it for my own kind of homebrew fantasy setting. And uh, it'll say, oh, well, you know, you need uh, this, 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 this. Hey, Russell Higgins is chiming in. I have not heard from Russell in a while. How goes it, Russell Higgins? Yes, chat is available. Uh, I kind of jumped into the show pretty quick today. Chat is available through YouTube. Didn't see me at BGG Spring. No, because uh, I did not go. Board Game Geek doesn't really um, doesn't really like me much. Uh, wow, Russell was in Italy. Sweet, nice, very cool. That uh, that would certainly be interesting. Better than uh, you know just hanging out in like uh, Spokane. Something like that. Go to Italy. That's pretty nice. But no, I did. Uh, I gotta be honest. Uh, I I don't really. I don't have anything against Board Game Geek. Really, I think they should invest a little more money into the website. This is my personal opinion because it's still, even after the tweaks and that, still pretty ugly. Pretty ugly website and not the easiest to um, n navigate. But regardless, whatever. Um, I don't know. They just—they've never been, you know, fans of me. They—they're not, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, they've never invited me to cover any of their cons. But the reality is, even if they did, I probably wouldn't go because there's just, you know, there's only so much in this in the minuscule budget I have, which is pretty much gone for this year. Um, where I can only, you know, I get, I can do Origins, I can do Gen Con. Um, we're even probably going to have to take a pass on San Diego Comic-Con this year, which is a huge show for us. We always have a blast out there. Just simply uh, no funds. And uh, it was weird. I was going to do the, the uh, crowdfunding, and there were companies that were on board, and then they couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. And then I wasn't hearing back from some, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put this crowdfunding thing on hold. So anyway... But yeah, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for chiming in there, Russell. Glad to uh, have you back. Hope you had a great trip to Italy. 
Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, so I like Pathfinder. Uh, I, I never dug their like really cartoony art, but it does seem as if their art style has kind of gone more towards a, a realistic sort of look. Uh, I might be wrong, but seems like a lot of their covers now don't have that odd kind of, um, yeah, it's like, okay, so, okay, a broadsword is, a, you know, a, a traditional broadsword looks a certain way. It should not be the size of the character, you know, uh, that real weird kind of, uh, you know, that's fine for Final Fantasy. I don't necessarily want it in my fantasy role-playing games. Anyway, so, as I mentioned, uh, quite a bit of role-playing game news today because End Publishing has a new What's Old is New core book. Uh -huh. Try to try to figure out what I mean by that. And I've got the dope on now, the modern action role-playing game version 1.2. Experience adrenaline-fueled action in this versatile tabletop game of modern adventure. Elite spies fight ninjas on snow-covered rooftops. Martial artists perform incredible chi-powered feats. Technology-laden burglars infiltrate wealthy corporations. Mutants with extraordinary powers hide themselves from the public. Soldiers of fortune help those who cannot help themselves. Really, usually soldiers of fortune kind of help themselves. Dark vigilantes prowl the night, hunting cowardly criminals. Oh, hi, Batman. Artificially enhanced operatives work deep behind enemy lines. Rugged explorers uncover ancient ruins and long-lost treasures. Lone crusaders investigate crimes where the authorities cannot. Play a secret agent, a weary investigator, an elite hacker, or a shadowy ninja. Are you a roving reporter, a kung fu expert, or a weathered soldier? Dozens of modern careers await you. This role-playing game allows you to create and run adventures in any modern setting from the late 1800s to the 21st century. Four heritages, human, mutant, augmented, and chosen, and dozens of careers from lawyers to ninjas, I was going to say, send lawyers, guns, and money, which allow you to create any modern character with a fun, intuitive life path system. A wide variety of modern equipment from the weapons of World War II to the high-tech gadgets of secret agents, drive an Aston Martin DB5, brandish a Magnum 45, or use an experimental jetpack. There's also full rules for running in the game, including fast but tactical combat, environments, and extended martial arts and vehicle rules extensive guidelines for building your own contemporary game setting, including rules for creating careers, foes, and more, with discussions concerning genre, themes, and technology. Whether you're an elite team operating undercover, a military unit, a group of vampire hunters, or apocalyptic survivors, now has you covered. This is a what's old is new core rulebook. You can score the 240-page PDF of now in PDF. Okay, Jeff, why, why am I repeating PDF twice? You can score the 240-page PDF right now for $10. So you can get the 240-page PDF of now, now, at DriveThruRPG. Speaking of DriveThruRPG, the third edition of the classic Western role-playing game, Boot Hill is available as a PDF or print-on-demand book through our friends at DriveThruRPG. Two rows of unpainted wooden buildings face each other across the wide dirt street. A signboard creaks mournfully in the hot wind. Down this track rides a lone figure, tired but alert. Actually, the actual press release says, down this track rides a lone figures. So how is it lone figures? Hmm. His boots, hat, and buckskin jacket are layered with dust. But the ivory-handled revolver on his hip is spotless and cool. Neither a beacon nor a threat, it's simply there, a part of the man. Drift back to the days of cattle drives, dance halls, range wars, and gunslingers. The Boot Hill Wild West role-playing game lets you relive the grand adventure of the American frontier. It's a wide open land where a man with strength, determination, and courage can carve a place for himself. This third edition of the classic Boot Hill game is thoroughly revised and updated. Well, back 
and the time at the time it originally came out it was it includes fully rounded characters with over 60 skills to choose from revised rules for shootouts and fist fights emphasizing quick thinking and quick action extensive campaign guidelines plus historical background and a timeline of the old west two historical gunfight scenarios plus numerous short adventures full out maps of promised city and the surrounding territory you can snag the 132-page PDF for $9.99 or the print-on-demand softcover for $19.99 from, as I mentioned before, my friends at Drive-Thru RPG. And of course, whenever I mention Drive-Thru RPG, if you're heading on over to that website, please stop by thegaminggang.com on the way over, click on one of our banners, and that way, if you do make a purchase from Drive-Thru RPG or one of the other sites, We'll get a small portion of that sale. It goes a long way to helping keep the gaming gang around. So I have to say, I played Boot Hill back in the day when it first came out. And my gosh, did, was it 1980? It must have been like 81 or 82, I think. It's when the original box edition came out. And that's why I thought, well, you know, 132 pages for kind of a core book for this, the third edition of Boot Hill. It's not a lot, but thinking back, I mean, original Boot Hill didn't have a whole lot of pages to it. And it was mainly really focused on the gunfight aspect uh, using a, uh, if I remember correctly, he used a percentile dice system, sort of like Top Secret did after that. But uh, I got to say, I remember one of the best times I ever had role-playing uh, at a convention was, gosh, this is probably around 1982. Maybe Boot Hill came out a little earlier than that. Maybe Boot Hill came out in about 80. But, because, um, yeah, I, th I think it may have come out in 80, because I think I owned Boot Hill before I got to high school. But, uh, anyway, we're like freshmen in high school and it was it was my best friend Elliot Miller from over at the voice of e.com at voice of e I should say dot com uh, Scott Weagle because his mom actually drove us to this convention uh, Tim Phelan was with there may have been one or two other people with us and we all got to play in this uh, boot hill adventure that was based on the John Wayne movie Chisholm so, and it was like a tra it was like a trail drive our characters were on. And uh, we had a blast. It was excellent. It was, you know, it, there was a, you know, crossing the river and, you know, trying to survive crossing this river. And, um, you know, there were snakes in the river, which, funny enough, you know, after that, then there was Lonesome Dove. I remember the, the series in Lonesome Dove and the one guy gets bit by a snake crossing the river. But yeah, it was a blast. And the person running it, he must have been... Now, you figure we were probably 14-ish, 15? Because it was the summer... I think it was the summer between our uh, freshman and sophomore years. That uh, And it was like a, just like a one or two day like game convention. Like a uh, like weekend thing, right? So uh, but we had a blast. It was great. And the funny thing is... Prior to that, I thought, yeah, Boot Hill kind of sucks. But but this gentleman had done all this stuff. He'd created all these charts, all these extra rules, all this different stuff. And he actually had told us that he was trying to negotiate with TSR to actually publish his extra stuff because it was great. It was it was really good. So uh, I, I have a soft spot for Boot Hill. I might have to go take a peek at this PDF. I might have to use... Those little portions that, that add up to, to help me out, uh, to help keep uh, the gaming gang around. I might have to use $9.99 of that to check out the third edition, because I don't recall the third edition whatsoever. I do seem to recall it. I thought they had some adventures come out for it from, from TSR, but I might be wrong. All right, so that is it for the news today after I pontificate about uh third edition um boot hill so 
couple of, a couple of things that uh, I, I wanted to mention. Number one, I am not surprised that uh, Solo has not done well at the box office. I know uh, folks at Disney are surprised. Folks at Lucasfilms are surprised. I'm not. And the funny thing is, I did mention this quite a while back on one of the episodes of The Daily Dope, saying that I I had no interest in, in a Han Solo movie. And I think part of it is because they killed so uh, Han Solo off in the new trilogy. And I... Russell Higgins chimes in saying, but it's a good movie. And I heard it is pretty good. Uh, I, I didn't hear that it's terrible or anything like that. I, I heard it's uh, it's good, not great. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised people are, are not flocking to go see it. I think part of it is because Han Solo's dead in the current trilogy that he's been killed off. So it's kind of like, I, I mean, I feel weird. And I, I had talked to... Elliot Miller about this and I said yeah I, I don't know this is just kind of weird it's sort of like he's you know he's dead in the current timeline so it's like do you really want to watch a movie about him when he was younger um same as other in any other character like a Darth Vader movie where Darth Vader was the main character when he's when he's evil I don't know it'd be kind of weird because you're sitting there thinking well I know how it ends for him I know how he, like, redeems himself. So, eh, I don't know. Plus, I think a lot of people are, are interested in seeing more uh, more Star Wars movies that are, like, in the current uh, time frame, right? In this current trilogy, kind of springing off from those as opposed to um, just, like, like, sharing stories from the past of Star Wars. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I heard it's pretty good. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to go see it. It's just not like I was chomping at the bit. It wasn't like Infinity War where I'm like, okay, well, it's opening day. Let's go. Let's get going. Uh, yeah, so Russell says... Uh, yeah, okay. So Russell says his complaint is, you know, skipping around in the timeline. Yeah, there's no... Uh, there's no suspense. You know, they're, they, you know Han Solo and Chewie can't die in this movie because it happens before everything else. So how could it? So anyway, uh, another item I wanted to mention was, uh, I did the, um, did the first look at the Aventuria, uh, almanac last week. And during the show, during chat, uh, there were, uh, some comments. And of course there's some comments on the video as well talking about the uh, the various different books that are available in English in either PDF or in print. So I do understand that uh, anything that's in PDF is also available in print right now. So that I did not know. Um, but there was discussion about the, the Aventuri of Bestiary because uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the offerings so far do not have like a lot of monsters in it. Might give you a handful of monsters handful of creatures uh there is the uh bestiary and i know there's the bestiary because i've got it i just haven't gone and brought it out for us to take a, a really deep dive and take a look at it yet so uh i guess some folks m watching may have misunderstood might have not realized that i do have the bestiary i have the compendium too for uh the dark eye so i just haven't gotten them out for us to take a look at yet because I don't, I don't want all the RPG coverage to just be Ulysses North America, even though they sent me all this stuff. I've got other companies who, you know, would like to get some coverage as well. All right. Anyway, I have Heroes vs. Warlords today, and it's from Udo Greb Game Design. I believe that is how it's pronounced. I'm not positive, but it is designed by Dirk Black guessing on that one too and as i pointed out earlier in the show it was supposed to launch on kickstarter this month it's supposed to be late in this month uh but it has been pushed back to september so i do not know exactly why uh i believe that um some of the uh companies that are working with ugg asked for a delay on it don't know cannot tell you for certain, but 
Let's move on over to the other camera here. As I mentioned before, this is a um, this is a prototype that was sent to me. So I figured let's take a peek at it. Uh, of course, obviously enough, it uh, it's not going to be on Kickstarter, you know, right now, but it will be uh, on Kickstarter come September. So I have really not taken a peek at this. Graphic design for this is uh, Nina Zukowski, I believe is the pronunciation. So as you can tell here, I mean, even the back of the box, this is just kind of a sticker placed on here. So it even says this is a prototype. Graphics are subject to change. So my understanding, my, uh, the premise of this game is that it's for two to three players. So you have two to three players and uh, you've got, uh, I want to say you've got barbarians, Amazons, and knights. Pretty sure that's, that's how it works. And it's kind of, the way the game has been designed is sort of to, to almost mimic a computer game I don't know for sure so like here they're showing like these miniatures and that those miniatures I am 99.9% .9 positive are not in this box so it shows that it is a four complexity on a scale of one to nine which this is like straight out of GMT's boxes and solitaire suitability says a seven so okay all righty so let's pop this on open and just kind of take a peek here see what we got whoops uh yeah so i guess these would have been the minis <laughs> ah, i hate uh it's one of these kind of like blocks oh yeah well, that's kind of funny kind of laser cut from uh wood laser cuts uh, it's one of these blocks where you can, st you like sometimes people stick, um, like f you know fake flowers stuff like that. Oh, I just hate, hate the texture of it. And to be honest with you, it's coming off like right on my hand. So I am gonna get rid of this thing. That's that's just gross. <laughs> that's just gross. Yeah, because now it's got like a it's leaving like dust on my hand and my fingers All right. I understand yeah they're just they're trying to protect these from getting broken especially since there's a, a bit of a stand here oh, get rid of that get out of here with that ah oh. see you can you may even be able to see it on my hand look at that Ugh. disgusting yeah. Okay, so we've got what six of these. So I'm taking a guess. This to me looks like a female. And that looks male. I take a guess. Maybe those are knights. Uh, knight maybe. Barbarian. I don't know. I don't know. These are just the silhouettes. Uh, that looks like that might be female. And that almost looks like that would be a knight. So uh, these figures are kind of silhouetted. So I'm taking a guess that they're probably silhouetted as far as... Um, kind of give me an idea. Okay, so the miniature that's going to come with it kind of looks like this. All right, so we got uh, three 20-sided dice. And three six-sided dice. In this world, you can never have enough 20-siders and 10-siders. I'll tell you that. All right, so here's a rule book. So let's take a look at the rule book. Talking about the contents, resource track. So let's see what we got here. Yep. See, we can see here, they're showing like the miniature. And I see that we've got this guy, this guy here, just like that. So these are just standing in for the miniatures. Talking about the glossary and abbreviations, the map, home cities. Uh, I believe this is a game where you're going to kind of build the map every time you play so that uh, 
your terrain is going to be different. The uh, the world map is going to be different every time you play. I'm talking about recruitment locations. So we got the Amazons. Yeah, Amazons, Barbarians, and Knights. Okay, cool. I'm talking about ruins, towers, outposts, guards. Heroes, units, and hero city displays. So we've got heroes. I think we've got heroes and armies. It looks like we've got uh, each player is going to have kind of a, a tracking sheet for various things. So we've got some diplomacy, military experience, trade, level, movement value, initiative, defense, attack. Name of the hero, experience points, honor points. Yeah, almost seems like a, an RPG-ish uh, sort of uh, vibe to some of the proceedings here. But as I mentioned, uh, the premise of the game, as far as I understood, is to kind of mimic a, uh, a computer game. So maybe something along the lines of uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. So we've got camp display, defensive works, alchemy, tilt yard, training area, town hall. It's like so it looks as if you can add different areas to towns or cities. Trade hall, storehouse, set up heroes, armies, and resources. The game world. Yeah. Could be uh, kind of detailed here. Sequence of play. Talking about moving the heroes. Reaction movements. So uh, I'm taking a stab that there's probably kind of like NPC ish. Uh, I don't know if there's like NPC armies or monsters or anything like that. End of operations, cleanup, end of round. Do have to point out that uh, UGG is kind of more along the lines of a wargaming company. So this might be a little bit of a departure for them as far as doing a fantasy game. I do believe that uh, they release a lot of war games in German in Europe. I believe that's uh, what UGG is pretty well known for. Probably one of the reasons why they have that kind of difficulty level box that looks exactly like GMTs on the back of their box. So we got mercenaries, shaman, temples, blacksmith. Some advanced rules. Those advanced. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Advanced movement. Advanced combat. All right. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I keep working with my nephew Cameron to get him a little more um, in sync, maybe I would say, with uh, war games and that, because he's a big history buff. He really enjoys history, but that doesn't always translate, especially a lot of military history is what he really digs, too. It just doesn't necessarily translate all that well to him um, at the tabletop, I guess we would say. All right, what else we got? I'll take a look at this stuff. So we got, ah, it's got that crap, man, I'm telling you. I don't know, maybe I'm just being wimpy or something. I just don't dig stuff that has like a, like a powderish feel to it. And then it ends up stuck on your hands and that. It's like, no, thank you. All right, so we've got some of these tiles here. But obviously enough, the regular tiles are going to be thicker because these are just kind of cardstock. So I'm going to take a guess at probably shuffle these puppies up. We got north and south. And then maybe when your armies move on to it, they're revealed. I'm sure that's kind of like a fog of war aspect to it, to these tiles. That's why we're seeing a north south. So when you flip it over, the, uh, the artwork in that is kind of facing the right way, would be my guess. Which does kind of cut down on the, um, the variety. Not a lot, but it will cut down on the variety when you always have to have these uh, 
hexagonal looking tiles facing a certain way. So there's quite a few of these. Pretty cool. I like the uh, I like the artwork. I was a little concerned with the box cover. Here, I'll show you real quick. The box cover, it's not bad, but it has a little bit of that uh, kind of cheap, cheesy sort of... Um, my gosh, the, these graphic programs that are like 10 years old, and I, I see them in some games of that, and I'll, I'll get like notices from people like, oh, hey, check out my Kickstarter. And I'll take a look, and it's all the, all the artwork, all the graphics are this like real cheesy 3D art that is like, like I said, we're talking like a decade old. And I'm like, no thanks. Uh, it sort of had that look a little bit, but not too much not too much so just something about that artwork i don't like i don't i don't dig it when they're showing like faces and stuff like that because they look so phony all right so we got a bunch of those and looks like we got counters we got different counters here oops let's see what we got so Oh, yeah, these are uh, laser cuts out of paper. Hey, I told you this is just a prototype here. So it looks like uh, these are maybe, oh, yeah, it looks like these are kind of monsters almost, right? Hang on, let me put the uh, reading specs on real quick. No, maybe, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, there's bear. There's a bear. Some bears there. I don't know, maybe the, these are barbarians. Maybe these are knights. I don't know what that is. That certainly does not necessarily look like, you know, um, a player faction. Got all these different uh, heraldry. See, and then we got Hero 1, Hero 2. Yeah, they're single sided. And then we've got more, more of these. Yeah, see, this looks like some sort of a creature right here. That looks like some sort of a, a monster or something. So I don't know. I couldn't tell you, folks. Uh, do dig the, uh, the different factors. So I'm taking a I'm taking a guess. Maybe your armies level up too. And you go from, you know, one one kind of icon, one one kind of image to another image as they get better. I don't know. I have no clue. All right. So then we've got this sheet here. Looks like these are special bonus counters there for attack, movement, defense. Uh, this might represent how big your army is that's with your heroes. Because I see we're starting off at, like, one. Yeah, and I figured these are probably dual-sided. One, two, three, then four, five, the other side's six, and up. And we see it's going up to 20. Yeah, it's like it goes up to 20, and there's quite a lot of these. Uh, and these counters are kind of, it's not like paper. So, uh, these counters are actually, this material is pretty nice. Now we've got standard, standard punch board. It's kind of strange how, you know, we got counters like this. We got, see how thin this is, right? And then suddenly it's like, boink. It's like, uh, Okay. All righty. So uh, maybe it's like, hey, if you don't like these counters, you don't like how thin these are. We've given you this sheet of the kind of standard kind of cut. A little bigger size, though. A little bigger size uh, counters there. All right, so we got all those. Let's set it back in here. It's going to be kind of interesting. Um... I have been uh, doing a lot of stuff uh, role-playing-wise, prepping, which I might talk a little bit about before I end the show, because uh, I don't know how um, 
I don't know how excited people are going to be <laughs> about this, but I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, so I think I will finish up. All right, so these guys are obviously going to be... They look like barbarians to me. Gosh, that crap is on everything from that block. Blah. Ugh. It's almost like uh, with your hands, it's almost as if like uh, when you accidentally bite a piece of tin foil. Ooh, you're like, ah. Okay, so looks like these guys are the barbarians and these are different tracking. I track different stuff here. Well, maybe these guys are barbarians too. It's like a couple, couple of options. Then here, there's like empty, so there's an empty spot. So I guess you're supposed to like write in your hero's name. These guys are obviously knights. Amazons. More knights. And more Amazons. And what in the world is this? Maybe this is like the like the battle card? Battle sheet that you you put your your combatants on? Very possible. Kinda look like it might be. So here you've got your ranged units, here you've got your melee units. Huh. We got some tables. Heroes versus Warlords Player Aid. See, it looks like your heroes can go up to level four, maybe or higher. It's like uh, maybe you're rolling on what different resources you can get from an outpost, conquest, movement, how much movement points it takes to move, guards table and dice results. Or if that. Maybe that's uh, attacking towns. Looks like towers and stuff here. Guards table. Got a bit of a round sequence there. Now we got another. We got some maps. All right, come on. So this looks like a map. Maybe this is like for sieges. Kind of looks like it. Kind of looks like this is a siege map. Or here's here's the. Uh, castle or keep wall until that's kind of the town or what's inside ah stuff's down here too Blah. thing is i don't want that crap all over my table either Blah. i know i'm harping about it but it just it just feels so gross all right and then oh, what we got here uh i guess this is kind of like a town Kind of like a town sheet. Well, it says Hamlet, Barracks, Shooting Range, Academy, Tilt Yard, Trade Hall. Maybe you can decide uh, when you're like in town or something like that, what you're visiting. Well, it looks like we got another one. Looks like there's three. Maybe, oh, maybe these are like your home provinces or something that uh, that you kind of kind of build on. Kind of track different things on. Huh, that might be it. Because there's three. Here's the other one. So maybe that other sheet, this other map here, possible that that's when someone attacks like your, your castle or something. Because it's showing a left and right tower. Showing a couple of towers right there. Huh. Interesting. Uh, looks kind of Euro-y. A little bit of a Euro style to it, maybe. Uh, and uh, kind of a war game style. So, interesting. So we got all those. We've got the different uh, player tracking cards. Looks like we've got these kind of combat maps right there. We've got all the different counters and the tiles. The rules... Three six siders, three twenty siders, and these stand-ins, these wood cutouts, these stand-ins for the miniatures. From my understanding, as I pointed out before, the um, 
the game is going to be for two to three players. Although it did say suitability for solitaire is a seven. That's pretty high up. Um, but there's, I guess there's going to be some expansions that are in the works as well. Now, it's possible maybe that's why they they uh, pushed, UGG pushed this Kickstarter back a little bit. Because they wanted to have expansions available uh, that people could pledge support for. I don't know. Maybe they weren't ready. But uh, I guess there's other expansions in the works that are going to um, break out even more players. So you'll have be able to play more than three players. Something I saw said something about like unlimited players. I mean, I don't see that. That doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. You don't have you know, war games and stuff like that with unlimited players. But that is what we find when we take some of this prototype stuff out of the box from Heroes vs. Warlords. So as I mentioned before, this is going to be coming to Kickstarter in September, so that gives me plenty of time to mess around with it. But I did want to share it, because because uh, I've had it for a couple of weeks now, I think. I'm still trying to get uh, uh, Sevestable uh, played so I have not, uh, oh, look at this cat here floating around. I have not had a chance to uh, to get that to the table yet. Uh, I, so, okay, so I was talking about I've been doing some RPG stuff, a lot of kind of fantasy stuff. As I wrap up today's show, because we ran kind of short today. We're not even at an hour yet. But uh, I've been playing around with Fantasy Grounds and uh, going to run a little bit of Call of Cthulhu as well as uh, I'm going to run some 5th edition. Because I have, I'll be honest, I have not run 5th edition. I'm fairly familiar with the rules, but I have not run it. Uh, and I don't care what edition Call of Cthulhu is going to be on. I, I don't really need to, to rehash a whole lot of stuff. I mean, I've, I've, it's been a while since I looked at 7th edition. But uh, there are a couple of things I was throwing out anyway. Chase rules for one, because they didn't care for them. But uh, so anyway, so I, I'm actually working on a little bit of an overlay to use with Fantasy uh, Grounds. And uh, I'm going to have Elliot Miller, my nephew Cameron. Might have my buddy Ed, who, uh, if you follow the show, I got to see for the first time in 22 years, a couple weeks back. He might remotely play. So uh, the thing is, I don't know if people are going to want to even check it out. But what I'm probably going to do is I am probably going to actually have one show a week of the, uh, you know, uh, it's probably going to be about a two hour session. And uh, so I'm going to have one a week. I shouldn't say I'm like, it's not as if I'm replacing the Daily Dope with this. It's going to be something that uh, it's just going to be another show on the channel. But I had to be honest, I mean, when I've been looking at like how to learn how to utilize Fantasy Grounds, and it's pretty cool. I really do dig what I've kind of uncovered so far. Uh, I have watched some other people, you know, running games, and I got to be honest, and I'm not picking on people, but man, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know how excited I would be to play in some of their games. I mean, they are just, they're just terrible game masters boring and then they let the players and all the players are like playing grab ass and stuff like that and it's like wow and then they then they put the stream up to watch like wow this is entertaining and i'm like oh this is terrible it's horrible so uh so yeah i'm just gonna share how i run games <laughs> so hopefully people want to check that out but uh yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of how I spent my weekend because I did not go camping. Uh, Friday didn't feel so great. And I figured, well, I want to be off in the middle of nowhere, have something happen because, you know, I'm still waiting to have another stent put into the old ticker here. So I thought, eh, then I'll just kind of hang, hang around, just relax, take it easy uh, for the weekend. And that's what I did. Uh, and I, like I said, I was messing around with fantasy grounds and uh, watching my Cubs play and stuff like that. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. So stay tuned. There's going to be lots more role playing stuff um, on tomorrow's show. I have no idea what's cooking yet. 
I don't know if things are going to pop up in the mail today, but what I might do is if um, nothing's cooking, I will actually break out. Yeah, I'll break out Fields of Fire from GMT Games and uh, do a little bit of a how to play. Not a super, super in-depth how to play, but just kind of give people an idea because Fields of Fire is kind of a kind of a tough game to learn. It's a little, it's kind of complex. So uh, I'll bust it out. You know, maybe I'll even do kind of a review. Uh, but I have not played it a ton. That's kind of why I haven't done a review yet. But who knows? Uh, there may be some new things that pop up in today's mail that uh, if so, I will probably jump into. Anyway, so anyway, I'm just rambling on. So, hey, that's what happens. I had four days off and I'm rambling. Oh, last thing I do want to point out, uh, we will probably not be having a full week of shows this week. So, because my brother and my sister-in-law are going to be going out of town and their kids are not going with. So, you know what happens? Uncle Jeff has to watch the kids. So, there's obviously a show today. Uh, there'll be a show tomorrow. There may not be shows on Thursday and Friday. Not looking too promising. So I will uh, I will know more tomorrow because I'm not exactly positive when they're leaving. So anyway, that's it for today's show. So as always, when you're not watching The Daily Dope, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I will be back tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.